this is a little talk that walks through and provides a little explanation for uh, one of the problem sets in module seven, the mixing and loading uh, module. And I want to introduce this concept. Of, first of all, in the water quality chapter on page 63, this concept is briefly mentioned. It says discharge calculations are useful for determining contaminant loadings for multiple inputs. And they give this little formula here. Um, I want to expand on that and actually um, work through how this is done. And that's what the, there's a problem set around this and some practice problems and a tutorial. So what we're looking at now is one of the diagrams in the tutorial. And the concept here is um, kind of simple, but very powerful. So, I mean, from this course, we've learned hopefully a lot of things about rivers now that um, Salmon Creek here, for example, um, is carrying a bed load that is delivering earth material from the mountains to the ocean as part of the rock cycle. The creek also is draining the watershed and um, handling the different flow rates that it gets from different rain events and different conditions in the watershed, how much runoff from each rainfall event whether it has artificial or natural levees and how often it floods. This is another aspect of what rivers do. When you combine the flow of the water with the concentration of a constituent or contaminant, then you get what is known as a load or a flux. And so the reason that's important is that um, even though we regulate and we're mostly concerned with the concentration of the water, like that toxicology talk went over, the dose makes the poison. So yeah, the concentration is the most important thing. But in order to um, really work with that concentration and, and regulate and manage that, you need to consider what's known as the load of the chemical in the river. So let's say, for example, you have a river salmon creek here and the flow rate here is a units are a little funky i'm going to get into that but the flow is flowing along at 990 liters per second and it's got a very low concentration of nitrate one part per million very nice water somebody's proposing to um, discharge some waste into the river and wondering if that could be permitted wondering if that's okay be and and the, it would be okay if the resulting mixed water, that is the water in the creek, plus this discharge water from a plant, once it mixes together, is it going to result in a water quality that is acceptable or not? Um, the term here technically is called assimilative capacity. In other words, does Salmon Creek have the capacity to assimilate this waste without causing the water quality in the creek to be compromised? It's obviously not going to be as good as it was before, but is it going to be acceptable? And the only way to figure this out is to do these loading calculations that I want to walk through. But just uh, you could sort of eyeball this and say, hey, I've got a lot of water at one part per million. Here's some water, 10 liters per second, about a tenth of that flow rate, but at a big 100 part per million of nitrate, 100 milligram per liter nitrate coming in, what is the mixed water going to be? Let's say our standard is 10 parts per million. Is this 100 part per million flow mixed with this one part per million flow? Is it going to cause this to be greater than 10? The really the only way to know how to deal with that is through estimating the load of the nitrate from this plant mixed with the load from the creek and what is the resulting concentration. So what these calculations do, this um, tutorial goes through in great step-by-step, -step, it's only like two or three steps, to calculate the load. The load, the flow rate, times the concentration. Those combined make a load. So if you have a little bit of uh, concentration and a lot of flow rate, that's going to be a high load, just like a high concentration and a little flow is going to be a high load. So it just walks through <clears throat> how to convert from cubic feet per second to liters per second. 
you need to do that because then you're going to multiply that liters per second times concentration, which is in milligrams per liter. The liters cancel, you get milligrams per second. That's cool. And then um, it's just a kind of a tedious unit conversion to get to pounds per day. That's a lot. Um, let's say, you know, when they're, when they're regulating mercury in San Francisco Bay, and we want the mercury level in San Francisco Bay to be a certain concentration. And uh, that's where this is called total maximum daily load calculations. And this is how um, sewer plants and other dischargers are regulated upstream of San Francisco Bay. So if you're upstream of the bay and you say, hey, I've got a little mercury in my water, is that okay? Then what the, the calculation is, well, look, will that load that you're contributing cause um, enough load in the total system such that San Francisco Bay will then exceed our target? This is how it's done. So the first step is calculating the load. Okay, that's one thing. The other thing is mixing. Taking one water, mixing it with another water, and combining the flow and the loads and figuring out what the concentration is of the mixed water. And this just walks through that step by step with a uh, practice example. It turns out <clears throat> in this diagram example, this ended up being two parts per million. One part per million nitrate cruising along, a big load of 100 parts per million comes in, but the ending, the end concentration is two parts per million. So I hope that ex explanation is helpful.